Hello everyone for week 10. I didn't think I'd actually get double figures for the amount of time that I've been doing this live because it's here. Week 10 uh, of the Chef Radical live cooking. Uh, so thank you again for joining me. Uh, this is going to be a good one. I really enjoyed trying this last week. So today we're going to do the uh, Hiroshima style Okonomiyaki. Before I get into it, if you haven't, if you haven't seen my post for one, get yourself a saucepan of salted water on. Um, first off, just before I go and start talking about what we're going to do. Um, just enough to cook your noodles, you don't need masses. And then when they're cooked, we're going to put them into some cold water. So we can okay, so, um, 10 weeks ago when I first did the first life cooking, which was a Osaka style Konomiyaki, um, I did mention about the Hiroshima style. Now the Hiroshima style is 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 very is similar uh, to the Osaka style, uh, but basically it kind of comprises of, of two pancakes put on top of each other, and it is super oishi. Um, as I said in the first one, Okonomiyaki means whatever you like grilled. Now um, a prototype of the Okonomiyaki appeared pre World War II. Uh, known as the Isen Yoshoku. I was hoping that I pronounced that correctly. If I didn't, I'm very sorry. Um, which is basically, which was then was originally a, a thin pancake topped with uh, green onions and dried uh, fish flakes. Of course, after the atomic bomb dropped, uh, food shortages were so acute that the pancake was made with whatever they could find. You know. Um, so the Japanese began adding ingredients uh, that was available. So that it was, uh, it was cabbage, it was eggs, noodles, locally caught seafood, which made it more sustainable, more substantial for the locals who at the time were trying to rebuild their lives. So a little bit of history about, uh, about it. Uh, it is definitely, I found a bit more hearty than the Osaka style, because you obviously got the uh, addition of the noodles. Um, I'm using uh, buckwheat soba noodles uh, this week. You can use any different type. You can use ramen noodles. You can use, uh, you can use even, like I think I mentioned, uh, you could even use um, like the little instant packet ramen noodles. Just use the instant ones out there and put them in boiling water. They'll work as well. Uh, so I'm gonna use the soba buckwheat noodles today. Um, I just wanna do a, another quick shout out to the Burnt Chef Project. It's a, it's a, a charity that is trying to raise, raise awareness for mental health in the hospitality sector. Um, it's a really great cause. Please go and check them out. That'll be wicked. Okay, so um, with no further ado, I think we'll commence. If you have any questions, media team is on hand with Dog, apparently. Um, so <laughs> we will uh, get started uh, now. So like I said before, we're gonna put the noodles on to boil shortly. So. Crank that up, get them nice and hot. Um, start with the cabbage. I'm using just the center of a pointed cabbage because I really like the flavor. It's my, probably my favorite cabbage to use. If you're using any other type, that's fine. So we're just gonna prepare that now. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. And I'm just gonna take the root out very carefully. Mads Times said that her mother just burst her eardrum shouting in her ear with excitement. <laughs> oh, good. Good, that's what we like. Right, so there we are, just taking the root out of that nice and simple. I'm just gonna cut it down into four. Okay, it doesn't matter really what you're using, if you're using white cabbage, and then you wanna chop it down as, as, as fine as you can. Well, you could use whatever cabbage you can get. If that's all you can get, it's all you can get. I mean, um, ideally, a, a white cabbage is what we use when we, when we practiced this last week. No, we didn't. We used the, we used the pointy cabbage. Um, but you, you could, but I don't think it's quite robust enough. You need something with a bit of, a bit of, um, a bit of bite to it. Kale seems to wilt away a little bit. So either, either, do, either use a white cabbage like you would use for coleslaw, um, I think we did knock on every with red cabbage. I didn't yeah, like she, it. Yeah, my wife didn't like it. It's, she made blatantly obvious. <laughs> um, I think perhaps we just needed a little bit, a little bit thinner. But it was, uh, I quite like the flavour of it. It wasn't the flavour, it was the fact that the 
batter hadn't cooked as well around it, so it was a bit oh, wet. Great. Well, can, uh, different vegetables act in different ways, don't they? Absolutely, my love. Okay, so that's the cabbage. Okay, so um, what you're also, we're gonna get ready now, uh, which I've kind of already got my knees off last ready, is um, you're gonna need, you're gonna make the batter in a minute. So in here, you're gonna need 110 grams of plain flour and a teaspoon of salt, okay? And then in another little vessel, you're going to need 200 mils of uh, water, and two tablespoons of mirin. Okay, and we're just gonna make a very simple batter with that in a minute, but my water is now boiling, so I'm gonna chuck my sable noodles in. Okay. some sort of vegetable with it as well. That'd be great. Um, so in the Okonomiyaki itself, you're gonna have the cabbage, you're gonna have spring onions and bacon. And we're gonna have the batter, which we're gonna make shortly. What we're gonna do, so if you've got the flour, 110 grams of flour, teaspoon of salt in a bowl, and then you wanna add your 200 mils of water, two tablespoons of mirin to that. Just give that a risk. If you couldn't get mirin, is there anything you can substitute? Uh, you can use uh, a rice, um, uh, a rice wine vinegar. Uh, I think we, you can sometimes if you use Shaoxing rice wine. That will work as well. Um, don't be alarmed. My my batter looks slightly different uh, because I'm using uh, not that I generally buy it, but I'm using a, an organic uh, bread uh, plain flour, which uh, I've got from a lovely shop near me. Okay. Once your noodles are cooked. Just gonna basically put them in a bowl of cold water. Stop that cooking process. Just give them a little mix so it's nice and uh, cooked out. Lovely. Okay, so back to our batter. So again, 200 uh, mils of water, 110 grams of flour, teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of mirin, or if you haven't got mirin, you can use uh, a rice wine vinegar, that's fine. So that's your batter. Now if you wanna go over and get a, a, a saucepan, a saucepan, a frying pan, pop that on the stove, we're gonna get that hot, I'm gonna add a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, oil to that. Okay, and basically we're just gonna cook what is the first start of the okonomiyaki. So if, we, if you tuned in for my first one, it's quite a simple thing to do. And then you're gonna need a plate, just to put it in something shortly. So in here, I'm gonna put a few tablespoons of oil, about three tablespoons of oil, okay? Now, I'm basically gonna pour some of the batter in. I'm gonna get that started, I'm gonna put the cabbage on top. You'll need a couple of spatulas um, for this. If you've got it, so you can flip it. I've got two nice sized spatulas there. Okay. So, noodles, if they're not done, should be nice and cold. Okay, so you stop the cooking process, that's great. A bit more cold water. Lovely. So they're my noodles, cold, I'm going to stick together so that'll be good. So, there we go. So we're going to get to take about two thirds of the batter, three quarters, and we're going to basically put it into the frying pan. Okay. Okay, I've got it on a nice high heat. Okay. And you want it to just keep a... 
for that. You want to just fill that all the edges like that, like you're making a, like you're making a, like a, like a French pancake. Okay. A crepe. A crepe. Then you're going to take the cabbage. You're going to put that on top. Okay. And is this just going to make one pancake this time? Because for the afternoon we have to make three. Yeah. So I'm going to make just one big beast. Okay. So spread it out. And you want, to, you want to just spread it out a little bit to the edges so it's, uh, it's nice and flat. I'm going to pop the spring onions in there as well. Okay. Mads is asking if you, she does a quarter if it's for four people. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, there's somebody's at my front door. Stop it, Sponge, that's enough. For ten weeks we've been going and, not, and nobody's come to the front door. Sponge, that's enough. Sponge. Okay, so now the bottom of it should start to come off the bottom, which is great. And you're just going to let that cook on a slightly lower heat. And then you can put your bacon on top of that if you're using bacon. If you're not, don't worry. Okay. It's going to go on there. Okay. Lovely. Okay, so that's there. Cakes by Anna says hello. Hello Anna. Okay, so you're gonna just kick that in there. And with the rest of the batter, there's gonna be a little bit left. We're gonna just pour that over the top. Okay. That's that, that's the first, first part of it. So while that's cooking, what you're going to do next, you're going to take uh, about an inch of fresh ginger, you grate that, okay, put that in a little container and then you want to add two teaspoons of sesame oil and three tablespoons of soy sauce, so you've got like something along those sorts of lines, okay, and you're going to put that in your cold noodles. Uh, Mads wants to know if it's all the cabbage in there. Yeah, all the cabbage, all the spring onion, all of it, yeah. Put that in with your noodles and you're going to give that a little mix. Okay, this is going to be one, a couple of things. One, it's going to give it a lovely flavour. Okay, and two, like when you make any pasta dishes and you've cooked your pasta, a little bit of oil stops it from sticking together. Okay, then I'm going to get three eggs in a little bowl. fits your frying pan, I haven't, I'm going to use another frying pan, I'm going to pop that on top, okay, that way it's just going to start creating a bit of steam and it's going to keep uh, all that lovely flavour inside, it's going to start gently cooking the cabbage so that when you flip it, it keeps a little bit of, um, keeps the shape nice. Mads, they're a bit confused, can you recap? Yes, of exactly course. What so, happened? you've got the batter made and you, um, you're going to put about three quarters of that into a frying pan and kind of make it like you would a, a, a crepe. Then you're going to put the shredded cabbage on top with the spring onion and the bacon. Okay, and then you're going to just put a lid in it. You put the rest of the batter on it. Yeah, well. and then the rest of the batter on top of the bacon. And then you're going to put a little lid on it just to keep it covered to get that cabbage cooking so that when, you, when we flip it shortly, it's ready to... Uh, to, to, to go really nice on top of the, uh, the noodle part of the Okonomiyaki. So the batter, what is the batter made of? So it's 200 mils of water, 110 grams of plain flour, a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of mirin. Okay, that's nice and simple. Then you've got obviously your noodles, which are all nice and cold now, mixed with uh, sesame oil, soy sauce, and grated ginger. Okay, so now, cabbage is pretty much holding together nicely. I'm going to take this monster. Okay. 
Yeah. Not bad, actually. Not bad. Little bit of mess. A little bit of mess. So we got the like when we made the first okonomiyaki. You're still going to flip it over and get that bacon nice and crispy. Okay. I'm going to put the lid back on it just to help keep it uh, nice and warm. Okay. Right. If uh, I'm using uh, bought okonomiyaki sauce today, if you uh, haven't got any and want to make some, see if I can remember the recipe off the top of my head. Um, can you recap how much soy sauce and sesame oil they first? For the noodles, so it's um, two teaspoons of sesame oil and three tablespoons of soy sauce and about an inch worth of grated ginger. Okay, so that's that. And then that can be mixed in with the noodles and that's ready to, to go like so. Um, if anybody does want the Okonomiyaki sauce recipe, uh, just pop a question out and I will, uh, I'll, I will give it to you. But you might need a piece of paper just to write that. It's relatively simple ingredients, but I'm using uh, shop bought today because uh, I prefer the flavour. Right. So what we did with the old Okonomiyaki here, I'm just going to press it down slightly just to make sure it's nice and uh, evenly spread out. Okay. Save on washing up. We're going to use this frying pan once again. This one is always a little bit a little bit trickier to do because unlike the Osaka style where the batter's mixed in with the cabbage and uh, and the spring onions and the pickled ginger, you've got something to hold it together, whereas this isn't. This is very uh, a little bit looser. Part of the reason why I've made one big one, so it's a little bit easier to uh, manage. It's funny, as I do this, I think actually I could do this a different way next time. Make it a little bit easier. Could we do a squid one next time? Yay! Right, so to make this vegetarian without bacon, put uh, maybe do a different couple of different types of cabbages. You can put pickled ginger through it. Uh, I see a lot of recipes in Japan where they use bean sprouts on top of there as well. Um, you know, use um, grated. Um, Actually, spring onions and one two in there as well. Uh, sugar snap peas, anything just can make a really quite a hearty, hearty vegetable dish. That mushroom one we had when we were in Tokyo, you could get those big oyster mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, the big oyster mushrooms or the, or the little enoki mushrooms would be quite nice. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, very carefully, I'm going to put a plate on the bottom, and flip it over. Dan Filan says, what goes in with the ginger soy sauce? Is it water? No, ginger soy sauce and sesame oil, and that goes in mixing with the cold noodles. There's a few questions, Dan, do you want to start at the beginning again on that one? Yeah, of course. People. So, we'll, what about right, the noodle at part? At the beginning, right at the beginning, start right from the beginning. Okay, so I've got uh, the shredded cabbage, spring onions, and I've made a batter with uh, 200 mils of water, 110 grams of plain flour, a teaspoon of salt, and uh, two tablespoons of mirin. I mix those ingredients, the flour and the water, all together. And then I've cooked that on the bottom to make like a little crepe idea. Then I've layered the cabbage on top, the spring onions and the bacon. I've fried it like an okonomiyaki. Then with the rest, a little bit of batter, and just pour it on top. And then after you've cooked it and flipped it over, you're going to have something along those sorts of lines. Okay? Then with the noodles, which should be already cooked and cold, you're going to mix that with the sesame oil, soy sauce, and the grated ginger. Okay? Then, I'm just going to give my pan a little wipe out, and then we're going to have, uh, then we're going to start sort of the next process. This is good. Questions is good. Questions slow me down. Work for me. Okay, so 
The next part of this uh, okonomiyaki is, is the noodle element of it. So we'll have three eggs, okay? And we're gonna kind of make an omelet in a second. It's pretty much what we're gonna do. So with that saucepan that's all nice and wiped out with a damp cloth, I'm gonna pop some oil in there. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully by this sort of stage, you should be either just finishing or just taking out your okonomiyaki, which is the cabbage and the bacon at this point, hopefully. Okay. So we've got the oil here. The fire, the frying pan's on fire. <laughs> That's the excitement. It's <laughs> smoky flavors. So, yeah, it's not going to take long. So what we're going to do with the egg, we're going to add about three quarters of the egg mix to the, to the saucepan. Okay, we'll put that on a high heat and we're going to get that cooking up. Okay. Okay, something along those sorts of lines there. Get it right around the edges, get all that egg mix used up. And then the noodles are going to go on top of this, okay, like so. Now, like you did with the cabbage before, I'm just going to spread the noodles out slightly, okay, over that. So you kind of got like a similar size okonomiyaki, as well as you've got a similar size sort of noodle omelet idea. Is there any way of leaving? Out the eggs for people who can't eat eggs. Um, too you could, you would just need to find some way of binding it. Uh, I, not that I've tried it, but perhaps uh, corn flour, binding it with a bit of corn flour on the, on the base um, would work. Or, alternatively, if you make a little bit more of the batter for this, for the okonomiyaki and mix it with the noodles, with the flour and the water, and you make you basically make a noodle okonomiyaki on the bottom, okay? So then, hopefully you've got something along those sorts of lines now, guys. Then you've got about a couple of tablespoons of the egg that's left. I'm just gonna pour that on top, like so. Now the reason I'm doing that is so that when I put the other okonomiyaki on top, and it cooks, it's going to create the seal and stick to it. Right, and then, sorry, been a little bit, uh, a little bit keen now. So, there you go. Once it starts coming off the pan a little bit like that, you're ready to sort of start the next sort of process. So, okonomiyaki. Lola H. Bell says things are heating up in the kitchen, I think from the fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, okonomiyaki goes next. Uh, Dan Filan also says, what if someone's allergic to Japanese food? They don't look and watch my videos. <laughs> Quite simply. <laughs> well, unless you've suddenly developed an allergy, which I don't think you have, Filan. Okay, so what I'm doing now, is so you've got a pretty hefty old okonomiyaki here. I'm just gonna bring the edges in slightly, and then you're gonna put it down to a low heat and I'm going to use a lid or a saucepan or another frying pan and I'm just going to cook for about eight to ten minutes. Okay, so I can get my little bowls of magic away. Right, so as usual on an okonomiyaki, you always want okonomiyaki sauce, either bought in or uh, homemade. And then you want uh, cupai mayonnaise, or if you've not got any cupai mayonnaise, you can just take a little bit of normal mayonnaise uh, and water it down. I know when we first did the first Osaka style one, um, I wasn't overly pleased with it. Um, a, a, a chef, uh, well, he owns, a, he owns a supermarket, said to me, oh, you could just mix it with a bit of condensed milk. And I've got to be honest, it wasn't that nice. <laughs> Didn't enjoy that really. Um, but uh, so I'm just saying, just take a little bit of normal mayonnaise and you can just water it down slightly. Okay, I'm just going to change my knife over because I need a bigger knife for chopping my, chopping my okonomiyaki. There's my egg. 
fucking lovely. So, what brand is um, the Okonomiyaki sauce? Uh, it is uh, Otafuku. Otafuku. Okay, and this is Kupai. Uh, I don't think you can quite see it, but there is actually a little baby on there. I don't think you can quite see it. And the other important ingredients to have are I'm using a, a nori seaweed flakes, just a little for seaweed flakes. You can just use uh, sushi nori sheets and just rip them up like we have done uh, previously. And then the other really big ingredient is uh, katsuobushi or bonito flakes. Just give a really, really lovely, lovely flavour. Um, okay. What comes after noodles are put on top of the eggs? So there should be a little bit of egg mix left. You're just going to sprinkle that on top of it, top of the eggs, on top of the noodles. And then just pop the okonomiyaki you made first on top of that. And then what you have is something along those sorts of lines. This big monster of a meal. Okay, and then pop a little lid on it or another saucepan on top, something that fits. And you just want to cook that. Now basically what you're doing now is you're cooking that little bit of egg. You're heating up those noodles because they've been uh, cooked and cooled. And uh, you're just kind of cementing it all together so it's nice and uh, easily cuttable in a few minutes time, okay? Um, so, if you haven't had a chance, make yourself another, you might wanna put a little bit of vegetables on, some description. Uh, I think I made some uh, onigiri earlier. They're not the best onigiri in the world, but no, I'll go and grab them and just have a look. <laughs> They're not trying to No, it's really hard, it's really <laughs> hard to do. So, please don't laugh at my uh, attempt at onigiri, but, so, if anybody knows me, they know that my love for Japan, well, it's massive, but it's on a gearies. And these are basically, they're nothing special. It's just rice. I didn't have any nori sheets uh, to put around it because usually you wrap them around it. And uh, you can buy them. They're about 59 yen. And the flavor I always got was, uh, as they label it, um, chicken of the sea. I was thinking, what on earth is chicken of the sea? And I remember eating it. And of course you see these, if you ever watch any anime, you see them they're all eating these things. It's got a little bit of sushi uh, nori around it. And, you it. and, and chicken of the sea is, is tuna. So it's just tuna mayo inside, that's all I've got. Tuna mayo, put a little bit of wasabi in there, and that's all right. So I'm gonna have a little something extra over there what, as well. What sort of rice? Always oh, sushi rice. Always oh, sushi rice for, for this. And then, uh, so that's just a little something else. Cause you know, what's better than having carbs? Then more carbs, because that's the that's the diet of the kings. <laughs> There's lots and lots of carbs. And then also, actually, not that I was going to mention it, but I'm going to do it because I thought I made it earlier. I'm not. I don't usually make cakes, but actually today, this is a, a matcha and dark chocolate cake. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to give that a go. I might even put a picture of it if it's any good on the inside. I might put a picture on my Instagram. And, uh, and if it's not, if it's all destroyed, then there won't be a photo in time. Okay. Um, Dan Filan asks, is it normal for me as the sous, the sous chef to be shouted at by the head chef, Ben yes. Filan? Beth Filan? Ben. Ben Filan. <laughs> <laughs> Since when did Ben Filan become the head chef? So is it Dan Filan said that? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm afraid... Well, actually, no, not in my profession. No, it's not, it's not usually normal. It depends what he's shouting at. Like, if there's anything like the other week where he got a kilo and a half worth of mints... <laughs> I mean, there was more, it was more making that. Oh, it was the steak burgers. Yeah, it was the burgers. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of meat there. Okay, so, been about 10 minutes now, and it will feel soft because you will see you've got the noodles in there as well, but it'll be nice and warm now. You should have something. What vegetables, if you were going to make a vegetable to go with that, would you cook with that? You, you could do, like, I think I did the, the miso cabbage a few weeks back uh, from uh, the Japan cookbook. That we use for Japan World Vegetarian. You could even just, what we did before, we just did um, boiled broccoli, but in the broccoli water, you just put a little bit of uh, sesame oil, and that just gives a really nice flavor, seasoned up nice, beautiful. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's just another sort of option you can do. Um, get a bit of rice on the side like we are, um, or, or, or anything really. I mean, it's, it's kind of, a bit, you know, keep within those sort of Asian flavors. If you're feeling really bold, go fryer, make some tempura. Tempura batter is quite easy to make. It's just um, uh, corn flour and sparkling water. Not tonic water, that would be foul. Sparkling water. Ugh. Cool. Right. 
So hopefully guys you're at this sort of stage. Um, so now we're going to just very carefully take this out and put it onto a chopping board ready to cut and top. Turn that fire off now. Matt is asking about making the okonomiyaki sauce. Okay, so what you need is uh, two tablespoons of tomato ketchup, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and two teaspoons of runny honey. Give it a good mix, and that's it. So again, two tablespoons of ketchup, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, uh, one tablespoon of soy sauce, light or dark, whatever your preferences, and two teaspoons of runny honey. Okay, um, perhaps my media team could put that in the comments. You got it there, your tablet's there. Yes, I'm saying. I need to write that down, I wasn't listening. Two tablespoons, <laughs> two tablespoons of ketchup. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. One tablespoon of soy sauce. And two teaspoons of runny honey. And that'll come through in the comments by Tales of a Seamstress, which is my mother-in-law. Anyway, back to this monster. So, Okonomiyaki sauce, when it's made, <laughs> just gonna sprinkle that on top. Mad's time says they've been a bit behind this time. It's fine, guys. Um, she wants to know when does the pancakes go on the noodles? You can put it on straight away. As soon as you've added the rest of the egg, okonomiyaki, the rest of the pancake on top, and then you want to delay it for a good 10 minutes. Okay. Cupine mayonnaise. Pretty. Then uh, you can, I'm using these of nori flakes, but you can use the uh, ripped nori flakes. And then these, one of my favorite ingredients in Japan is this. Because it is, it's not, not nothing special, it's just, it's just fish. But it's just so oishi. And if you go to Wagamama's and you have it there, it just looks absolutely... When the dish arrives, and or even if you go to Japan, you have a Wagamama's. Go to Japan, and it just moves. Now people go, ooh, food's alive! Okay, so, nice sharp knife. Confidence. Straight down. Clean it after each time. I'm going to cut this into six. Okay, two in half and then each half into three. Bit of bacon there. Do you want a nice one more bacon? Is that what you want? I'd be sad if that was me. Oh, well, that you would. See the layers of cabbage on top, bacon, noodles on the bottom. Okay, just like that. Just cut the last ones. Oh, delicious. So there we have it, guys. Okonomiyaki, Hiroshima style, feeds easily three, four, two if you're really hungry, one if you're really greedy. <laughs> um, but there we go. I hope you enjoyed it guys and I hope you enjoyed tasting it as much as I did and as much as eating it as you're going to. 
Um, thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate it. This is great. Um, I'm not too sure how many more I've got of these going. I'm, I do have um, slight reports that I might be going back to work uh, soon. Um, but until I sort of confirmed, I'm sure I will tell you guys. Um, but next week, I uh, wanted to perhaps sort of step away a little bit from Japanese cuisine. And next week, I kind of wanted to show you a dish that I do at work. Uh, it's a very simple dish. Uh, we're basically going to make a pesto, which if you saw last week's recipe, it's going to be the same principle. Um, with some nice vegetables, and we're going to cook a piece of fish. So take this time for next week to see if you can get yourself some nice sea bream. Uh, if you've got a fishmonger's near you, um, get in touch. You're just going to need a fillet per person, so uh, of sea bream. If you don't like fish, then uh, you can do a breast of chicken instead. And if you're vegetarian, uh, we can perhaps do some um, pan fried pieces of halloumi on top, whatever your preference. I'll get a recipe, uh, recipe an ingredients list out on Monday. It's a very simple dish, but it's something I do at the restaurant. I thought it'd be something be interesting to see something a little bit more uh, that I do. Okay, so cheers guys. Thank you again for tuning in uh, for, the, for this Hiroshima style Okonomiyaki. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you very much. Take care.